31, welcome to example five. This time out, we're gonna graph the function one half times two to the x. And again, we're gonna do domain range and end behavior. So if you remember from way back in section 3.5, when you multiply by a constant out in front of the function, all right, out in front of two to the x, then you're gonna stretch or shrink your y values. And in this case, we're gonna shrink our y values because this is a fraction. All right, so anytime you have a number out here that is between zero and one, you're gonna shrink your y values. And anytime you have a number larger than one, we're gonna stretch our y values. And some of the more comfortable or familiar examples are like if you had y equaling x squared, and then you went to y equaling three x squared, right? This is your basic parabola. This is an even skinnier parabola because the y values are three times as large here. All right, but we only have y values that are half as large on this one. So let me erase this. All right, and then I'm just gonna make sure I denote this here that my y values are shrunk by a, fun uh, by a factor of one half. Y values shrunk by a factor of one half. At least from the function that we did in example three. All right, and that function that we did in example three, if you remember, it was just two to the x. So now we have a one half out in front of it. Okay, so with that, I'm just gonna head right over to technology and have my graph, or my graphing calculator, excuse me, take a look at this. So here we go. Let me see what we had left in there. Oh, that was from example four. So let me clear these out. And let's put in, I'll put one half in parentheses. Oops, let me really do that. And then we will multiply that by two to the x. All right, I'm gonna go to my table and get some ordered pairs. Ooh, that is too far down. Let me scroll. We should get some numbers. There they are. Okay, so it looks like I have negative 1.25. I have 0 0.5, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, Four, and I bet I have four, eight, yeah. All right, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Okay, and I can see my horizontal asymptote in there, so let me graph it. Huh, I seem to have misplaced my ruler. Well, there's only so many places it could go. Well, that's weird. Well, I'm gonna come up with a fake ruler for right now. I don't know what I did with it. And it's odd because I'm at my desk and I don't know what I did with it. Okay, I'm just having one of those moments, feeling pretty, pretty slick. Okay, so let me go ahead and just get any kind of straight edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my horizontal asymptote. So there we go, we've got a horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. Okay, so with that, let's go fill in our traits, my domain. Again, I, I well actually, I do have a fraction this time out. I have a fraction of one half, but that denominator is never zero, so I don't need to worry about it. I've got no radicals, I've got no logarithms, so my domain is all real numbers. All right, my range, it looks like zero to infinity. My end behavior, I've got that horizontal asymptote. We're back to y equaling zero on the left. All right, and then I've got my right arrow heading up. Okay, and if I wanted to see what this graph looked like, I can just graph it, zoom six. It's gonna look pretty similar to what I have on my paper. That's, that's it, there's my exponential growth function. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page and keep on going with transformations. I'll see you in a bit, bye.